pretty significant stuff. A great internal battle that is waging within him. He wrote to the Romans, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. He explained his problem further. I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Paul knows what is right. He knows what is wrong. But he cannot seem to do the right, and he continues to do the wrong. Paul realizes how serious the battle within him is, describing it as a war. He says, I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. Paul is so desperate <coughs> in his frustration, he calls out, wretched man am I, who will deliver me from this body of death? And finally, Paul announces the answer to the war that is within him. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now then, the gospel, which was just read, our gospel passage talks about being yoked. Now why should we be yoked? And especially, why should we be yoked to Jesus? The number one answer is sin. We do not do as we ought to do. We do as we should not do. Does it sound familiar? How many people can identify that reality in their own life? Wanting to do one thing and yet doing something else. Paul did not have an exclusive on this problem. It is so common to the human experience it is in the confession that we recite together from just a few minutes ago as we all admitted before God, most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and earth that we have sinned against you by what we have done and what we have left undone. But how can it change? How will our behaviors, how will our choices be modified? How can we do as we should and avoid what we shouldn't? The answer is found in the gospel, be yoked to Jesus. That's more than making the easy, I'm a Christian claim without doing as Christ says. Lots of people have had in their lives one moment or another when they said, I'm a Christian, and then never looked back. No change, no impact, no sign of God working in their lives. That type of Christianity is terribly lacking. The type of Christian claim that makes a difference is to be yoked to Jesus. Being a person who is there with Jesus side to side, that type of Christian, that is the person who hears Jesus say, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The thing is, I think our problem in fully getting this passage is that we don't understand what a yoke is. We just don't know the terminology. We're not familiar enough with it. We haven't ever seen one in use. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to us. So let me explain it. There's this definition. It comes from the Anchor Bible Dictionary. It says, in the earliest period, the yoke was a simple instrument which bound animals Singularly in pairs or groups <coughs> to a mechanism of production. A yoke binds animals together for a single purpose. They work together. Now when animals are being trained for a yoke, the young and the inexperienced are yoked 
with the older and the more experienced. It's a bit like breaking a horse for saddle, only you're breaking it to work in pairs. You've got the one that is young and hasn't done it before, they can be unruly. They can fight against the work. They struggle and they strain. But when you yoke them to the one that is used to it, you yoke them to the one that is familiar with the work, who understands how to strain under the yoke and get the most from their labor, well, that one doesn't want their work disrupted by the young one. The older one, the more experienced one, actually works at training the younger one. Helps keep it in line through kicks and pushes. Little twist to the head with a bite. You ever see horses, mules, oxen working in teams? It's obvious one is dominant over the other. And in this way, by yoking them together, the one that is struggling still against the one that knows how to do it, then the person driving the team only has to control the one. The other one exerts pressure on the other to comply. And then, eventually, that younger one learns from the older one. As a result, it no longer struggles and strains in vain, but instead comes in and finds the work to be easier, the struggle to be less. The labor is lightened, the yoke becomes easy. This is the picture that Jesus gives us. We are struggling through life. God wants us to live in a certain way. But we're struggling against life. We do what we should not do. We don't do what we ought to do. And Jesus comes along and says, take my yoke upon you. I'm the one who has lived a life perfectly. I know what this yoke is all about. I know what the struggles that you face are all about. Let me teach you how <coughs> to take rest even in the yoke. How in the struggles of life we can make it easier. Now knowing this, just what does our passage promise? First thing is, yes, it's true, we are promised rest. Whatever struggles you are laboring under, whatever heavy strife is weighing you down, Jesus will give you rest. It's not by allowing you to give up, not by giving you time off. Jesus will give you rest when you take his yoke upon you. And what does taking his yoke mean? That he is showing you the way. That he is sharing the burden. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus says. Why well, learn from him? For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden light, Jesus continued. Jesus will provide rest. Jesus' yoke is easy. His burden is light. But we must put it on that yoke. We must spend some time side to side with Jesus in order to learn from him. And how do we do that? We do that through prayer. We do that through reading the Bible, meditating on God and his word. Back in the 1800s, a great Baptist minister, C.H. Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, lived in London. He wrote this. He who lives without prayer, he who lives with little prayer, he who seldom reads the word, he who seldom looks up to heaven for a fresh influence from on high, he will be the man whose heart will become dry and barren. But he who calls in secret on his God, who spends much time in holy retirement, who delights to meditate on the words of the Most High, whose soul is given up to Christ, who delights in his fullness, rejoices in his all-sufficiency, prays for his second coming, and delights in the thought of his glorious advent, 
Such a man must have an overflowing heart. And as his heart is, such will his life be. That is being yoked to Jesus. In that way, you will learn from him. In that way, he will teach you, and the burden will be lifted, and the yoke will rest easy. What is troubling you? What are you struggling under? What is weighing you down? Respond to the invitation of Jesus. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Amen.